Okay, so today's Diamond Call, we're talking about keeping your coaches consistent when life gets busy, because a lot of times they want to put their business on the back burner, and, you know, letting how to remind them that you're going to lose your business if you're not consistent. So, um, some of the things that... I like to focus on is, and we've talked about this before, but um, like for Molly, I gave you like your non-negotiable this week is to make your new checklist because I feel like that just gives them so much of a direction to go in because like just for example, so this one girl, um, Joslyn, who I just posted about, she, she was like suffering a lot of depression and like, she's like, I just got the email. Um, she signed on the beginning of March. She's like, and I just didn't know what to do. She's like, I was already freaking out. I was overwhelmed with my own stuff. And then I just didn't even know where to go. And so I said, okay, you know what? I've got this seven day checklist or this checklist that I, I do now. It's a lot more simplified. Let me send that to you. She's like, okay, cool. And then she got it. She's like, thank you. This is so much easier. This is so much less overwhelming. So I've gotten great feedback from it that you can just do a little bit at a time. And she was like texting me. She's like, okay, so my only issue is I just started drinking my shakes. I've had it for a month, but I, I know I'm watching this video and I'm finding out that I'm not going to have the PV to stay active if I, and I don't need another bag of Shakeology. So what do I do? I've never had somebody say that to me before, just from my welcome email, you know? So it really states the importance of being active, staying active, and what you have to do to be active. So that's why I just think it's, I love it so much. It, it And so many people now are like, okay, I understand the importance of signing up my spouse. I want to make sure that I get him on the right, on the weak leg. So can you help me with that? And like, I love that because with my other welcome email, again, that wasn't a question I got asked because this checklist like addresses the importance of hitting Emerald and getting your spouse on early so they can benefit from the volume. Because there's like a three minute spouse video in there or something. So, um, yeah, so follow the checklist and then every, um, Monday through Sunday runs that seven day group. And what I would do is I've been trying to check in every day. Hey, who's still here? Like trying to make it really interactive other than the post, because that's when people fall off. If you're not commenting back to them and they're, they're commenting. Um, the other thing I've been trying to do is pair people up. So they not only tag their sponsor, but they tag somebody else going through it with them. So I have four girls in there right now. Um, they're not all mine, but I have four girls, like two of them are tagging each other in their upline and the other two are tagging each other in their upline. And that's kind of cool too, because they're building that relationship. That's maybe possibly a start to a success partner too, and it's keeping them accountable. So um, you can add your people to that group of mine, but definitely keep on them and group or send them a message. And if you have more than one person in there, just start a group message with everybody in your seven day group and be like, Hey, ask any questions you have here. I'm so excited for you guys. This is such a great group. You're going to learn a lot, but have this group chat is for you to ask anything you have. And I think that extra step of just saying, Hey, ask me here. If you don't want to look like an idiot in the group, nobody's going to think you're an idiot, but ask any questions you're worried about here, your new questions. Um, and then I don't even add people to my team page until they finish that checklist. So, you know, and you don't even have to add them until after they do the seven day group if you don't want to, because they can ask the questions in that seven day group. Um, but that kind of is like, once you finish your checklist, I'll make sure you get added to the team and you can get to meet everybody. And they're like excited for it. Um, all right. So start, like I said, start a group message with um, any of your coaches that are, that have finished the checklist for that month. Just put them all together and be like, you know, April newbies or April rock stars or something like that. And just as people get added that month, you can just add them and be like, hey, guys, I, I want you guys to stay connected. You know, you're going to be on the same page. You're going to have a lot of the same questions. So ask them in here and I can help you and we can all do it together because it's going to be easier for you to do it that way than having individual group messages with every single new coach. So I know that you want to spend 80 percent on you, 20 percent on your team. So doing group messages with like all your monthly new coaches is something that's really great. And then it gives them that opportunity that they know, like a lot of times they think you're too busy and they don't want to come to you because they are like, she probably has 17 under other coaches asking her the same question. I don't want to be a brat. So that's a great way to make it like make that mindset that if you need me, I'm here, come in here. Um, and then I love to get them to find a success partner right away. And, um, you probably will match them up with a couple of people before they find somebody that they really love. I know you guys have probably all been through a couple of people that until you found somebody that you liked and, um, you know, but I just try to match people up when they first get signed on. So at least they have somebody that 
is keeping them accountable and then you can find somebody that's more their niche um, you know if, if it doesn't work out but finding a success partner right away and telling them the importance of finding a success partner is so helpful because that means that they're going to also be talking to somebody else and growing and and not just you and so because I think that even though you're changing that mindset like I'm here if you need me let me know they're still like oh, I don't want to ask her another question so somebody that's on the same page I think they feel a lot more comfortable um, checking in with a lot um, and then I like to give examples of coaches who took a step back and paid for it. You don't say names or anything like that, but give examples of somebody that, you know, something happened in life that they got too busy and they took their foot off the gas and, you know, then their team does the same thing and just kind of reiterate like the speed of the leader is the speed of the pack. And, you know, if, if you take a step off your business, don't think that your coaches are going to be like gun ho without you. Um, and, you know, I use this example that, you know, what would it be like if I just stopped posting in our team group and I didn't check in and use that example with them, too, because they'd be like, whoa, that'd be weird. You know, if they, you know, what, how, what would you think if I just stopped checking in with you guys? and I just stopped sharing things that I was learning each week. Like what? what would you do? You wouldn't be motivated. So, you know, just kind of instilling that mindset that if you're not going to do your business, your coaches sure as hell are not. And you're going to really pay for it. And really hard to get back on track. And you can use the example of on the cruise, I think I made one or two posts because I was like, I'm checking out, I'm not doing anything. And um, I like, honestly, I'm still fighting to get my engagement back. Because when I you went a week without posting and people aren't po liking and commenting, the way Facebook algorithm works is, you're not going to show up on their newsfeed anymore because they found somebody else to like and comment on because you weren't posting. And so it really hurt me. It was a step back. And Sarah and Tanner both said they noticed it too, that they had to fight to, you know, their, a post that would get, you know, 30, 40 likes before was getting like two. And you're like, what the heck is happening? So it's the same thing. If you take a big step back and you're not posting, you're not being consistent, those people that were once seeing your post, you're going to have fight like hell to get them back. So I like to use like real examples like that to kind of be like, oh, I don't want, I don't want to have to work even harder to get the people I've already worked, you know, to get to interact with me. Um, and then encourage good personal development. Um, so, um, yeah, Sarah says, I always say you have to keep your foot on the gas. Exactly. Like, I mean, I honestly, like, March was probably the worst month that I've had since I've been a coach because um, I was just lazy from traveling. I was, like, not feeling great from pregnancy, but it wasn't even enough to not be doing anything, but I was just using it as an excuse. And I mean, we, I went from our team being ranked 58 to 104 because I totally took my foot off the gas. And that's honestly like the first time that I've done that in the three years that I've been a coach. I can honestly say that probably like maybe five days before March, maybe five days would go by and I was still posting, but five days total in three years that I didn't do anything for the business. And that's like unheard of because I was like, I'm going to do something every day because I want, I want this business to work and I want my team to be successful. So every day, even if it's posting and inviting one person, I'm going to make sure I'm doing something. So just use that as an example. Like, you know, April didn't get where she was just, you know, doing it when she felt like it, she did it when she didn't feel like it. So I think another big part of this is getting to their why. So in their getting started right call, make sure you are getting their why. And I've had people tell me, I want to help people. And I'm like, nope, that is not enough because that is not going to be something that's going to make you do it when you don't feel like it. So give me more. So make sure that it's deep because it has to tell that it has to be something that's like when you've had a long day and you don't feel like doing it, this is something that you're going to look at and be like, okay, all I have to do is send three messages and I'm done. So, um, my getting started right call is very basic because I have the checklist and I have that seven day group. My getting started right call is honestly just, um, uh, their why, their goals, talking about making their list, and some samples of how to talk to people, how to use the free groups, and their goals. And that's like physical goals, um, you know, things like that. And then just kind of talking about the importance of, excuse me, sharing their story and documenting their journey. So I keep it very basic. I ask them if they have any questions, but they should already know what Emerald is. They should already know what Success Club is. Um, and then I just make sure that I, I talk to them about, you know, reiterate the importance of it and the three vital behaviors. But I keep it so much more about getting to know them and their why and their goals and 
and kind of just sharing a little bit about your story too and letting them know what kind of leader you are and like kind of asking them like, so what kind of coach do you see yourself being? Do you want to be a discount coach? Do you want to be a hobby coach? Do you want to be a business builder? Cause I'm going to help you whichever way you want to work. I don't want to push you if you don't want to be pushed, but if you want to take this thing to the top, that's where I'm going and I'd love to take you with me kind of thing. So, um, you know, just kind of establishing right away what they, what kind of coach they want to be. You can say things too, like if you fall off the face of the earth, what am I supposed to do to get you back on track? So that way you can, you know, and then when you send them a message and they're, you're like, hey, you asked me to keep you accountable by sending you a message and calling you out. If I don't hear from you and I don't see you posting, this is it. What's your deal? What's going on? How can I help? So, and I think that that, it shows that you care and it also is like, you told me to come get you. So what's going on? Um, so I like to do that too. Um, encourage good personal development. Um, and I'd love to hear from you guys what you think is a great personal development for new coaches. I like to say, um, you know, obviously the compound effect is a good one. Go for no. And one I really love is how to rock your network mar marketing business by Sarah Robbins. So, um, what are some of your favorite PDs for new coaches? You have to unmute yourself. I like the network marketing Robbins one too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just really good. What is that called? How to rock your network marketing business by Sarah Robbins. It's, I like it because it's not long. I mean, what is it? Maybe like 70 pages max. It's really small, super, super easy to comprehend, very basic. But so for beginning coaches, I feel like it's not something that's going to overwhelm them. Mm -hmm. um, I like that. Yeah, it gives you samples of like what to say a lot too. And I love that. Like when people say it's a pyramid scheme, what do I respond with? And mm -hmm. I really love the amount of samples that she gave. Um, I really love the compound effect. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that I talk about all the time. Like even when I'm talking and telling them to post and things like that, like how it all compounds and mm -hmm. you know, your, your little minimal efforts, like, if you're doing nothing else, that all compounds, yeah. you know? I feel like I need to, I'm going to get it on Audible because I, I read it when I was first a coach. So I haven't honestly read it in like three years. So I feel like I need to read it again because I feel like it's just such good stuff to share with your team too. Yep. Um, Tanner and Angela, anything different other than the ones that we said that you recommend for new coaches? Um... I think sometimes it depends on the coach, but I definitely think how to rock your network marketing business. That's the first one I got. I think I won it through one of your little groups or something, mm -hmm. but, um, that one, and I have coaches that will like tell me straight up. They're like, I like tend to put things off or well, I get to know them and they're kind of a procrastinator. So I always recommend eat that frog too. Mm -hmm. It's a really, it's an easy one to I mean, I listened to it. I didn't read it, but it was an easy one to listen to. It's not too intense. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Um, something else just popped into my head, and I forgot what it was already. Um, oh, oh, so, too, if you have somebody that's really struggling with confidence, you can, you know, go for that, too, and that could be either you're a badass or um, the confidence code are two good ones too. And there's actually a file section um, in our team run pink that has a ton of personal development suggestions broken up by category, like confidence and, you know, things like that. Um, for you as leaders, I would encourage you to start looking into things from John C. Maxwell, Zig Ziglar, um, and then if you haven't done the How to Win Friends and Influence People, definitely do that. That's probably one of my favorite books I've ever read as of right now. It's taken me forever to read it but uh, or listen to it, but it's so good. So, um, But for that leadership mindset, I really love John C. Maxwell. Anything Zig Ziglar is good. Jim Rohn is good. Um, really good stuff because they take it a step above like doing what you need to do and then also telling you, you know, I love there's this one image that I love and it's like, um, a manager and it like manager and leader and the manager is like, ah, like tell it. And then like the leader is like the person like pulling, I don't know. It was like, looks like they were like pulling something as a person at the front of the pack. Like, 
you know, and stuff like that. And I just love that mindset that you're not telling people what to do. You're leading by example and, and hoping that they follow kind of thing. So, um, Angela, anything else from you? Okay. Well, if you think of it, everything pop back in, but I'm not, um, okay. So, the other thing I, I've been doing is offer incentives for finishing the seven day group. And I used to offer incentives for coach basics, but like I was mailing maybe one or two out like every two months because people weren't finishing it. And it was just like really long and just, I just 17 days is too long. Seven days I think is perfect. Um, and the content is a lot easier and something that you can use right away. Um, so what I do is I, if you go to Eric Worre's the GoPro website, I got, if you buy in bulk, so I bought 10 DVDs or CDs and I got them for $5 a piece. So they're normally 10 bucks, but, um, I got the, the GoPro for $5 a piece. So you spend 50 bucks, but you get 10 of them and that'll last you a while. Um, so that's a great $5 gift to give to people once they finish that seven day training. And that's like a good incentive too. There's plenty of other stuff that you Where can, did you get that April? Just the, um, I think it's his GoPro website or go yeah gopro but the eric worry so that was a great deal because i didn't want to spend ten dollars a coach even though like okay like it's it's fine but it just all adds up so um that five dollars a person is really great and that's a good book for somebody or a good cd for somebody to start right away and it's the same price to do the book too i just always do the audio cd because i know me personally i i do better with that um incentive for success club so um you know, running your, your success club point every week. And maybe, um, even if you just post it, who's, who's what, if you don't even take the time to make a graphic. Um, but what you can do is make a graphic on Canva and then save it. And then you can just edit it every week. So it's not a ton of editing that you have to do. I outsource mine altogether, but, um, even if you're, you know, posting on in your group each week, like, Hey, who has the most success club points or, um, who has the most volume, things like that. So really encouraging, um, in your just talking about success club, success club, success club in your team group is, is really great. Um, and then group chats for anybody that has one through four success club points and then any, and then a group chat for anybody that has five or above and just kind of like congratulate them. Um, Sarah has said that, um, it's really made a difference, right? Huge. Yep. I have, um, a chat going right now. It's called in the success club, yo. And, um, <laughs> and I just, <laughs> we had a little conflict last month. I removed everyone at the end of the month, but, um, now we're adding them back in as soon as they have two points on the board. Mm -hmm. And it's really good because that's training with the willing. That's exactly who wants to work. That's it. Like not chasing people. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> um, yeah. And then another great thing that you can do is ask for screenshots. I love doing that. Yep. You know, the number one reason why people aren't making sales is because they're verbally vomiting on people. So like, or they're asking, they're talking about the product before they're building a relationship. So I love asking for screenshots. Like, no, in the beginning, I want you to do this. This is how you'll learn. And this is how you'll teach your coaches to, this is how I learn. Like, this is what I want you to do. Um, the sooner you can teach them and help them, the sooner that they're going to be better. Yeah. And they, they, you know, like talking about like making success partners, they're kind of like every month, same couple people in that group. There's, they start seeing patterns like, okay, we're, we're all, we want the same things. We're striving for the same things and you know, whatever. I don't care. The group right now, it's me, Zach and two people and it's fine. Like I'm fine with that. Yeah. It could be one person in there and I'll still help them. So. Exactly. It's, it's really good to like show them too. And it makes them feel special. Like, yeah, you can make a leaderboard and that's awesome too. But that extra little one-on-one -on -one time means a lot to people because no matter how Quiet. busy you are, Quiet. people think that you are so busy. Like people are like, I know you're so busy. I'm like, I'm really not any more busy than anybody else. Like you just mm -hmm. think I am. But, um, so I like to kind of like get down and, and show them I'm here for you. You don't have to be afraid to talk to me. 
Yep. And it really helped at the end of the month too, because I was like, I'm in the trenches with you guys, like 11 o'clock on freaking last day of the month. I was there. Um, and it, not even that, but it's not my, even the only person in the group that's my personally sponsored coach is Zach. So <laughs> it's, that's the way you build volume or whatever. I'll take it. Okay. Say hi to Molly. Say hi to Molly. Who is that? Who's talking? Sorry, that's my phone. <laughs> oh, oh. I was like, who is that? I don't I see like, anybody that would be saying that. <laughs> say hi to Molly. I'm like, Zora, hi. Was it your nephew? <laughs> um, no, actually, a girl that I really freaking want to be a coach, and she keeps putting it off, just sent me a video of her baby. And Aww. she said, say hi to Molly. <laughs> that's so cute. Um, I was really confused. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize I wasn't muted. <laughs> I'm like, who is saying that? Pay attention to me, Molly. <laughs> I'm paying attention. Hi, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, onward. <laughs> um, the other thing I really love doing is getting, helping them get their first win. When you can get them their first sale, their, their life like changes. Like it's like, oh, I did it. And they feel so much more comfortable. So the sooner that you can. So I really ask people that are working like, okay, who are you talking to? What are their objections? What program do they want? Like I like to ask these questions and then I can give them like, well, if their objection is that, say this, you know, and things like that. So I like to be really involved in their, when they're talking to people so I can help them with that. And, and a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people like do things on their own and they don't, they like feel bad bothering you. But I really love when people come to me and they're like, okay, I was talking to this person. She said this. I'm like, this is what you say. And I am okay with like literally typing out what I would have as my response because that's what Kelly did for me. And that's how I learned so well. So I really, really like that. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to take the extra time and write out exactly what I would respond with, with somebody that's working versus spending the same amount of time trying to track down five coaches that signed up three months ago that never did the checklist, you, you know, so it's worth it for you to spend time with those that are working, like work with the willing and less time on those people that aren't doing anything. So I would definitely make sure that you make that a priority when you're talking to people because, you know, oh, sorry. Um, that's so like, you know, I can't tell you how many examples I've had where somebody was like, oh, well, they said no because of this. And then I give them a testimonial or a reason why they should do it as a client before they sign on as a coach. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. she said, yeah. So, you know, you just have so much more knowledge and so much more um, help that you can give them with objections. And that's really great too. The other thing is I don't forget, I do have that 60 second objection series. I've got like six 60 second objections on what to say when you don't have the money, what to say when you don't have the time. And that's a great resource too, because it's quick and simple and they can see how I combat when people tell me something instead of being like, oh, okay, maybe next month. Um, so, and then what I get is I get a lot of people that are gun ho and they want to do it all. And then they get overwhelmed because Either their kid or their husband makes a comment about them always being on, on the phone. So I currently have that with one of my new coaches. She's rocking it. She's awesome. I'm sorry. Um, she's rocking it. She's awesome. And she said her son was saying something like, mom, you're always on your phone. And I was like, oh my gosh. So she's like, now I got to get this figured out. So especially moms or people that are busy. What I tell them is write down everything you have to do, doctor's appointments, kids, whatever you have to do for them, your, you know, work, workouts, everything, family time, scheduling time with your spouse, whatever it is. And then look at that and see, where can I put my power hour? Where can I put another 30 minutes later in the day? So I have them write out every single thing they need to do. And I had Autumn do this a couple weeks ago because she was getting really overwhelmed because she just was like, I feel like I'm always, always, always on my phone and always ignoring my kids. And that's not the way to build the business. That's You don't want people to be resentful towards you. So I actually have them make sure that they're figuring out their schedule and fo focusing on working and being productive, not busy. Um, the other great thing that has helped me with that is, um, creating my interest list and then doing the, what's it called? Let me look at it. Um, the thing where it kills your newsfeed. I used to have something and I didn't like it. This one, yeah, I don't, I didn't like purity, but this one is called newsfeed eradicator. And I really like that. 
it just has a simple motivational quote instead of my newsfeed. And that's helped me so much because I'm not scrolling constantly on my computer. Um, so talk up the seven day group, like kind of make sure that they know the, se the checklist is non-negotiable. You will not get on the phone with them until they do that. And then the seven day group is, and just talk about how like the seven day group is like literally your key to learning how to be a coach in the beginning. It's got so much good tips that, you know, I wish I knew when I was first a coach and things like that. Um, and then also talk up power hours and, you know, try to figure out something that you can do, you know, maybe that your team can jump on or, you know, if you can find at least like twice a week, something that your team will do with you or, you know, something like that. I just think power hours are so, so important. Um, you know, and we were doing those regularly and what was it, January, February. And, you know, I just, I felt so productive during the day when I was doing that. And it was just, it just set the tone for your day. And so Tanner and Sarah and I have started jumping on at 730 again this week. And I can't tell you how much I love it. It has just made such a big difference. So, um, you know, we can always do t multiple power hours. You can schedule whatever, whatever, do with your team, um, find a success partner and do it. But I would talk up that because, you know, I like to tell my, my team, like that seven day checklist, that's like 80% of your focus for the first two weeks that you're a coach. Like if you're not in that first week, then focus on the checklist then. And then once you're there, that's all you're focusing on along with power hours. Um, so just ex, ex, you know, and talking about like the business activity tracker and like just doing their things that they need to be doing every day and not worrying so much about, okay, now I have to figure out Instagram and now I have to figure out this and now I have to do this. And I want to make sure that I'm interacting with people. Just have them focus on the seven day checklist and their power hour and inviting. And the biggest thing that I want to make sure people know is, is when I say inviting, I don't mean inviting to a free group. Yes, that's great, but that's not an invite to your business. So you have to be also inviting to the challenge group to coaching because a lot of people think that I'm talking about the free group and I'm like no that's not an invite that's building a relationship so making sure that they're going for that ask and just say you know talk about the go for no like you know you can either just be afraid or you can go for it and it's just a no right now if they say no it's not a no forever um <clears throat> my favorite example I love to use is for is from um, go for no and they had the person that got the most no's and sales come from the company come up and re receive a plaque and it was like funny and humorous and then they had the um, person with the highest sales come up next and it was the same person because he got the most no's so, oh my gosh I just got chills that's crazy mm -hmm. yep so I just love pointing that out like go for no because it's gonna it's gonna plummet your business and I actually have a section in my notebook where it's like no's and I write everybody there once they say no, because those are people I'm going to follow up with in the next month or so. So no's are actually cool because you've already done the groundwork. They know what it consists of. You can just check in later and be like, Hey girl, I was thinking of you. You know, I know it wasn't the best time for you then, but I was just wondering if you wanted to join our boot camp this week. Cause you know, I just keep thinking that you'd be so fun and so, so great, a great addition to us, to our team. Or something like that. So um, those no's are a great, per great way to know who to follow up with. Um, and another thing that I've seen some other people do that I haven't implemented yet, but I would love to is accountability posts in your team page. So you can be like, all right, comment below what um, your personal development was. Um, if you drank your Shaco, what, what flavor it was, did you get your workout in, what your mood is for the day, if invites, you don't have to do all of it, you can do some, maybe one day is like, okay, today's your personal development check-in, and on Tuesday it can be, okay, today's your Shaco check-in, okay, Wednesday, what's your workout today? So you can also rotate, because I think if you ask everything, they're like, ugh, you know, but if you have maybe have one thing a day, like one can be invites, one can be, you know, sh like whatever. So that's something that you could even, you know, schedule in buffer just every day, just kind of being like check in below, maybe ha create a couple of images in Canva with it or something like that. And that's a great way to just get people realizing that this is the heart and soul of your business and, you know, just making sure that they're doing it every day. Um, 
it, you can also do like a game with it and add up everybody that comments every week and do a winner, even if it's just for bragging rights, like doing a winner, um, maybe the person that, you know, wins the most and out of the month or everybody that wins the week gets entered into a prize at the end or, you know, something like that. So um, be creative with it. But I, I really do pe think people like a little friendly competition and, you know, they like being seeing their name up there just as your challengers do and things like that. Um, another thing that I really need to focus, start doing is focusing on your volume on your team. And so announcing like who has the highest volume for the week and, um, who is, you know, and shout out winners for the week and, um, just really focusing on, it's not just about success club. It's about volume. It's about helping more people. It's about growing your team and helping your team be successful. Um, so you can always run reports in your coach online office and focus on volume. Um, you know, you can focus on the leadership ladder after the fifth of every month, they run that report. So you can, you know, do that and you can do that for your whole download. It doesn't have to just be your personally sponsored coaches either. Um, and then daily, weekly check-ins with your people that are working the business. So whether it's daily, whether it's weekly, just check in with those people that are, you know, the ones that are willing and, you know, just keep encouraging them because if you go weeks without talking to a brand new coach, something's wrong. If you don't hear, hear from them, something's wrong. They've lost their mojo. So I like to try to stay on them and, and check in because a lot of times they're being overwhelmed. Honestly, do you remember how overwhelmed you were with, when you started as a coach? I was so overwhelmed. Like I was like, Oh my gosh, I have to learn everything. I remember I would like go to Starbucks after work and like try to like read everything on the website. I like printed it all out and like did all that. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm never going to know this all. Like I felt like, <laughs> cause I'm a super nerd. I felt like I had to like know everything about the business, everything about the products before I did anything. And I was just so overwhelmed. So you know, and I like to tell people like, if you're not overwhelmed as a coach, like there's something wrong with you. So, you know, it's not just you just know that I, you know, have been doing this a long time and I still learn things every day. Um, so just kind of like letting them know that you've been there. They're not alone. Cause sometimes they're like, am I an idiot? Like, why can I not like get a handle on this? So I think really just, um, the biggest thing that I love to do too is a lot of times your coaches will put you on a pedestal and think like, Oh my gosh, I could never be like Sarah or, you know, things like that. And I'm like, no girl, <laughs> the only difference is that I've just been doing it longer than you. I'm still figuring it out. I still have bad days. I still get overwhelmed. I still forget things. Um, you know, it's really just me being consistent and doing it for a longer time than you. So I think the more that you can, you know, get on their level and like, be like, you know, not let them put you on a pedestal because you're no different than them. You've just been doing it longer. And um, the other thing I really love to, and you know, I've always been big on this with you guys is encouraging them. Once you're Emerald, figure out your team name, make it yours. It's your team. It's your, you know, group of awesome people that you get to like have this new family with own it. Um, and so don't like be afraid for them to do that and be like, <laughs> they don't want to be on my team anymore. Like that's the best thing that you can do is find people that want to be leaders because as they get their team page, I, I tell people like, if you have two people on your team, like make your team page, like, you know, um, hosting team calls and things like that are just so important for that team dynamic and just letting people know, like, I'm a leader. If I can do this, you can do it kind of thing. So a big thing for me that I would say is that I don't ha – there. I feel like no one else will – is taking the initiative to break off and kind of, like, do their own, like, at all. Like, I feel like you have so many leaders, April. Like, there's so many people who are like, I'm going to host team calls and make a page and whatever, and I just uh, – like – I feel like I still have to like drag people to get on our team calls, let alone get on like host their own. What I would do is um, maybe start a thread in your team page and be like, it is never too early to start thinking about your team name. I'd love to see what your team name ideas are below and post them below. And that's just one way to start getting them think and kind of talk about the importance of, you know what, um, you know, I joined April's team and I don't, 
like to run, you know, but it, so, you know, that doesn't define who I am. My team defines who I am. And so I want you to make sure that you're doing that too. So I think that's a really cool thing. Then also you can say, you know, if, if you want some ideas, like put, type in some passions or hobbies you have, and you know, maybe we can all brainstorm and help you think of some ideas too. But that's what I would do is write down your passions, your hobbies, and try to find some words that maybe explain you there. The other thing I really love to stress is it doesn't have to be a slogan. Um, a lot of people have like one word for their team and that's really cute too. So sometimes it's harder if you're trying to think of a slogan and it's fine if it's just one word. Like my friend Heather, hers is Team Radiant. So I think it's so cute, you know, so um, it doesn't have to be a slogan because sometimes that's harder to think about. Right. Um, find one word like um, uh Autumn's is vitality. She's very into like loves. Um, I think she said sunshine is one of like her favorite words or something like that. So she was looking up like synonyms for that or something. So, you know, things that are important to you, you can look at that too. But I would, I would do that because that's kind of a fun thing. It's kind of, they get to be creative and then also like, okay, now how many coaches? Um, now, once you have two coaches, I, the best thing you can do is start a team page. It doesn't matter if it's you and your significant other and another coach in there, but the best thing that you can do is show your team that you're a leader. Um, and you and say like how you were nervous to do it and you didn't think that you'd be a good leader, but and how it's changed your business since you have. Kind of thing. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, one of the things that like, I always say, like, I want to be like an in the trenches leader. And I feel like I am, I do everything presented to me, like whatever. And I present it to them as well. But one of the things that like, I, I guess forgot to do is tell them how I felt in the beginning, tell them what it was like for me in the beginning and not just be like, here I am working full time and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking to Zach the other day. And when I started as a coach, I was like, felt like there as a business, there wasn't a lot of structure. You didn't get a lot of information. You had to seek information. And it was super overwhelming at first for me who wanted all of the information imaginable, just mm -hmm. like you. So I am trying to like reflect on that also so that, you know, we like I can kind of level with them a little bit because other uh, like I feel like I don't get it like I, I don't know what the hold up is yeah and I think that's so important because I mean literally up until like a month ago my welcome email was a hot freaking mess like <laughs> you know it was like so you know just you can just tell people like you know our team has come a long way when I signed on I got this crazy confusing welcome email and I had to figure a lot of stuff out on my own and you know what? Uh, we have made it so simple for you. Here's your checklist. Here's your seven day group. It's night and day, the difference from when I signed up on a coach. And I can honestly say it's true for all of you because like literally I've just got my shit together recently. So, um, you know, I don't take offense to that at all. Like it's, it's a good thing. And you can even use that, you know, even April, she was successful while she still had a hot mess of an email. We didn't, but we figured it out anyways, cause we wanted it, you know? So now it makes it even easier for you to, to figure it out without having to do so much work on your own. But you know, if we can do it, from starting from basically nothing you can so it's funny when people are like I read an article I'm like you read an <laughs> article whoa I am blown away girl get it <laughs> I'm like oh so you mean your only source of information is not what comes out of my mouth that's <laughs> amazing what an idea <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. It's so crazy. I'm like, honestly, like, I think I watched every video, read every piece, every PDF in the coach online office. And yeah. you know what they always say, you're not going to find coaches like you. It's rare when you do, but like, you know, for so much, so much of like how much you want it, you're not going to find somebody that wants it as bad as you. And you're like, dang it. Why can't you? I want someone who wants it worse. Like go on. Yeah. <laughs> Get down with your bad self. I know. Exactly. <laughs> like, you know, when I see like other like coaches on our team having more success club points than me, um, it's not like it's like oh my gosh, I love this. I just created a monster. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, girl, like you know, it's so fun to see like you know your your coaches, you know, just being successful and running with it. And I really think that this is the year that you guys are going to see that because I know that Star Diamond is is happening for all of you. So, speaking of that. Let us pray. <laughs> It will happen. May 18th is the cutoff. So uh, for um, 
Diamond. So who do you guys think are your, anybody that has it, the potential to make you a star diamond? Um, Zach will be Ruby next week. <gasps> Ruby! Oh, and, exciting! and then he'll just need two coaches. Two. Wait, four. 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 Ah, that's so exciting. So him definitely. And I, I feel like I have super control over that. Cause I'm like, Oh, are these people? Where are you getting them from? <laughs> but are you signing them himself? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so cute. I want to um, come on Matt. He won't even, I don't even think if I wanted to give him a coach, he'd, he wouldn't take it for me at this point. Cause he wants it all for himself. That's so cute. Oh, I love it. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah. So, and he wants his summit tag to say diamond. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, you getting to be in the sweaty tunnel with me. I'm so excited. <laughs> Um, okay. What about you guys? I feel like the ones that I thought were going to be are pooping out. And so my mind is kind of changing. Oh, one second. I'm going to.